The next part of this chapter is now fertilization. Now what is fertilization? That you know it is fusion of male and the female gametes to form a diploid zygote where you have the sperm fusing with the egg or the ovum and a diploid zygote is formed and this process will be involving the process will be involving the following stages first will be the arrival of the ovum second insemination third capacitation of the sperms fourth fusion of the gametes where you have subphases like acrosome reaction cortical and zona reaction sperm entry activation of the egg karyogamy or amphimixis now first coming to the arrival of the ovum arrival of the ovum will be obviously when the egg as secondary oocyte will be released from the ovary during ovulation in the middle part of the menstrual cycle during the middle stage of the menstrual cycle around the 14th day and this secondary oocyte will be co collected by fimbrae and it has finger like projections passed on to the infundibulum and the whole of the fallopian tube is lined by ciliated epithelium and it has mucous cells and in that ciliary currents the egg will be transported to the ampullary isthmic junction of the fallopian tube the secondary oocyte once it is released can be fertilized only within 24 hours of its release then it de degenerates next step that is insemination what is insemination is introduction of the male gamete into the female reproductive tract so the male is going to discharge the semen high up in the female vagina close to the cervix during coitus that is sexual intercourse this is called as insemination and the sperms are going to move in the liquid medium secreted by the female genital tract plus it the sperms has to pass through the cervix uterus and finally reach the ampulla of the fallopian tube where fertilization is going to take place we have seen we have talked about this that the prostaglandins present in the seminal plasma is and oxytocins what is the function of that prostaglandins is to stimulate uterine contraction so the uterus is going to contract push the sperm towards the fallopian tube so it's going to help in sperm movement so that they are able to reach to the fallopian tube and the sperms live only for 48 to 72 hours outside the hum the body once it is released then third step of the process of fertilization is capacitation of the sperm very important step capacitation making the sperm capable of fertilization without this process the sperm will be unable to fertilize an egg so sperms are made capable of fertilizing the egg by secretions of the female genital tract and this process is called as capacitation and this will occur in the lower distal part of the fallopian tube and takes 5 to 6 hours for this process to undergo and what is going to happen in this process all the inhibitory factors such as surface glycoproteins seminal proteins and the cholesterol membrane over the acrosome will thin become thin or weaken so that when acrosomal reaction takes place the acrosome releases the sperm license when it reaches near an egg plus entry of the calcium into the sperm will change the movement from undulation to whiplash undulation just like a snake moves undulating movements huh whiplash like if you crack a whip how it is vigorously moving so that is the change in the sperm movement from undulation to whiplash and that is we say that the sperm becomes hyper activated so it's going to move at a very fast speed then fourth step will be fusion of gametes now fusion of gametes out of 40 to 150 million sperms that are deposited in the vagina only a few hundred like 200 to 500 reach the egg rest they die out while moving to the into the fallopian tube now this fusion of gametes have various sub phases so what are the events which occur in fusion of gametes are as follows 
first is the acrosome reaction. So we'll find a number of sperms, a capacitated sperms, that means sperms made capable of fertilizing, fertilizing an egg will get attached to the surface of the egg. When they reach egg, they clump around the egg and this is called as sperm agglutination. Then the acrosome will start releasing the enzymes because the egg is covered by two layers. Outer layer will be the corona radiator which are basically follicular cells and next inner layer will be a thick layer of glycoproteins that is called as zona pellucida. So they start releasing the enzymes called as collectively called as sperm lysins that dissolve the egg coverings. So these enzymes what they include first will be hyaluronidase hyaluronidase that is going to dissolve the ground substance and what that ground substance we call as the hyaluronic acid mucopolysaccharides basically of the cells of the corona radiata so there they're going to digest it next enzyme will be corona penetrating enzyme cpe and that is going to dissolve the cells of corona radiata. So they are going to make a pathway for themselves. And the third enzyme, zona lysin or acrosin, that is going to digest the zona pellucida. And as a result, reach to the surface of an egg. Now the sperms binds to specific glycoproteins. It means they are compatibility proteins present on the surface of the sperm head and present on the zona pellucida so, sperm receptors on zona pellucida like zp3 so the sperm head will bind to the receptor zp3 that will induce it to release acrosin and or zona lysin and that is going to dissolve the zona pellucida at the same time another reaction occurs that is called as a cortical reaction binding of the sperm first will be as soon as the sperm reaches to the egg what after dissolving the zona pellucida so it reaches to the surface of the egg immediately due to influx due to entry of calcium what is going to happen there will be depolarization of the egg plasma membrane and this depolarization what is going to do other sperms in the area near the egg will be prevented from entering the egg so this is a momentarily change that is the depolarization of the egg membrane immediately will happen when a sperm will bind to the egg. So this is called as fast block to check polyspermy. Polyspermy means entry of more than one sperm. Immediately when the egg membrane becomes depolarized other sperm cannot enter and till it becomes back to the polarized state so there is a fraction of a second at the same time there will be another reaction what we call as a cortical reaction so at the same time what you're going to find due to the entry of the calcium into the egg there are cortical granules produced by the Golgi bodies that are present in the periphery outer regions of the ooplasm or the cytoplasm of the egg what you can refer to as the egg cortex so calcium will induce the these cortical granules to move to the surface of the egg membrane burst and release their contents into the perivitelline space that is the space between the plasma egg membrane and the zona pellucida and what the contents contain they have enzymes like proteases that is going to destroy the sperm receptors on zona pellucida so as a result another sperm cannot bind to it it will also modify change the plasma membrane harden it and convert it into fertilization membrane so that another sperm cannot enter the egg and what this constitutes what we say as slow block to check polyspermy and what is polyspermy that is entry of more than one sperm so this was about the cortical reaction which both depolarization and cortical reaction will ensure only entry of only one sperm then next will be sperm entry the as soon as the sperm 
reaches to the surface of the secondary oocyte, there are changes in the egg. The region where the sperm touches the secondary oocyte, at that region the cytoplasm will bulge out, form a projection. What is called as the fertilization cone or cone of reception to receive the sperm. Then the plasma membrane of both the sperm and the egg is going to dissolve and the head, neck and the middle piece will enter the cytoplasm of the secondary oocyte but the tail will be left behind. So in the neck what did we have? The distal centriole and the proximal centriole. The distal centriole form the axial filament that is left behind. The proximal centriole of the sperm when it enters the egg will divide into to form the two centrioles and it is going to form the mitotic spindle for cell division. The middle piece contains the mitochondria that is going to degenerate. So the mitochondria present in the zygote will be from only from the mother's egg that means it will be maternal in origin. Next step will be activation of the egg. As soon as the sperm enters the egg, what it is going to cause? The completion of meiosis 2 by breakdown of metaphase promoting factors and switching on of the anaphase promoting complex that is going to result in the formation of a single ovum and a second polar body. And the egg of that single ovum will function as the female, sorry not the egg, the nucleus of the single ovum will function as the female pronucleus. Last step will be karyogamy or amphimixis. Then the head of the sperm, what it contains only the nucleus because the acrosome has given off their contents. So the sperm nucleus will function as the male pronucleus. The male and the female pronuclei will move towards each other, replicating their DNA. When they meet each other, the nuclear membrane will break down and the chromosomes will go over to the mitotic spindle between the centrioles. This mixing of the paternal and the maternal chromosome is called as amphimixis and that results in the formation of a diploid zygote. So this is a diagram showing the stages of sperm entry into the ovum during fertilization. So what we have shown, this is the egg plasma membrane. Beneath this egg plasma membrane, these are the cortical granules that is produced by the Golgi bodies. And this is the zona pellucida surrounding the egg plasma membrane. The space between the zona pellucida and the egg plasma membrane is called as the perivitelline space as you can see it here. So as soon as this is a sperm as we can recall this is the head, this is the acrosome, this is the nucleus, this is the tail. So as soon as the sperm reaches to the surface of the egg it's going to release the contents from its acrosome, the sperm license. So this is the acrosomal reaction occurring here. First will be digestion of the ground substance, hyaluronidase. Second enzyme will be the corona penetrating enzyme that is going to digest the cells of the corona radiator. And then will be the acrosin or zona lysin that is going to digest the zona pellucida. So as it digests the zona pellucida, the sperm is going to reach to the surface of the egg. So as, as it reaches the surface of the egg, the all this part that means the tail will be left behind, the neck, the he head and the middle piece will enter the into the ovum. As soon as this enters, it is going to trigger will be cortical reaction. So you have these cortical granules here coming to the surface of the egg membrane, burst, release their content in the perivitelline space and they are going to destroy the sperm receptors present on the zona pellucida plus harden the plasma membrane converted into fertilization membrane. So this is the cortical reaction occurring here, formation of the fertilization membrane. So that's what we have seen. First is the contact, second is the acrosomal reaction, third is the growth of the acrosomal process. This is a sperm plasma membrane, fusion of the plasma membrane of the two, dissolving of the egg membrane and the sperm 
sperm membrane plasma membrane of the sperm and the egg membrane and here entry of the sperm where the head middle piece and the neck will enter tail will be left behind and followed by cortical reaction but as soon as this touches here what is happening depolarization of the egg membrane so that another sperm cannot enter at the same time what will be happening will be cortical reaction that is going to destroy the sperm receptors so this is a sure way a foolproof method that to ensure another sperm does not enter into the egg so this is to ensure monospermy monospermy and to prevent polyspermy so these are the stages of sperm entry into the ovum during fertilization next sometimes you are asked what is the significance of fertilization if you are asked about the process there is no need but sometimes you are asked separately what is the significance of fertilization obviously when two haploid gametes meet that is the what is going to happen the diploid number of the chromosome will be restored ba back that is the purpose of the meiosis to produce haploid gametes because when they fuse during sexual reproduction the diploid number will be restored back next that we read about meiosis is genetic variability through recombination of genes because of crossing over another this thing significance will be that the secondary oocyte will complete meiosis too and only at that time the process of oogenesis will be completed that is the single ovum and the second polar body will be formed fourth will be it as soon as the sperm enters you have mixing of the chromosomes and start of cell division so it will activate the fertilized egg to start cell division immediately and cell division in a zygote is referred to as cleavage division or last it will determine it's at this point the sex of the young one will be determined because you we can have two types of sperms some sperms containing y chromosome some sperms containing x chromosome so depending on which sperm is entering the egg if it's x then it will be a female if it's y then it will be a male so this is also going to determine the sex of the young one to be developed from the zygote so that's all so it seems lengthy but you read it as a story it's not difficult to remember any doubt you have please contact me thank you and god bless you all